We all grew up wishing we had a Batmobile, right? But sadly, it's nothing but a work of fiction, like the Fantastic Car from Fantastic Four. Well, the rules have just changed. Well, wrong. As crazy as it may seem, some superhero vehicles are actually genuine. Which of these would you love to give a test ride? These are 20 superhero vehicles which actually exist. Number 20. The Batmobile Possibly one of the most famous fictional vehicles of all time, the Batmobile has long been the imagined dream car of many a prepubescent boy, and the occasional girl as well. So what do you do if you have more money than God and everything you could ever possibly need? Well, you build your own gosh darn Batmobile, that's what. And naturally, the place in the world where this is most likely to happen is the United Arab Emirates where money flows like oil, and owning a Batmobile is simply the side effect of being filthy rich. This is the Batmobile that's been spotted driving around the streets of Dubai. It's a fairly incognito way to travel, so I imagine the owner is a shy and retiring sort of wallflower, don't you? This is no vintage 1960s cartoon-style Batmobile, nor is it even the Batman 89 car, unfortunately. This is a full-on Dark Knight Batmobile with all the accoutrements. Based on the video game Batman Arkham Knight, this particular Batmobile looks more like some kind of massive military armored vehicle than any other vehicle on the road. But what do you think? Would you like to drive this thing around town? I mean, how effective do you suppose it would be at parallel parking in a tight spot? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Joker's Car Back in 2016, when the movie Suicide Squad came out in theaters, some fans took their passion for the film and their weird fandom of that particular incarnation of the Joker to a brand new level, and they built the Joker's car from the movie. The car that was made for the movie itself was actually a complete custom kit body car and frame that was built onto the framework of an Infiniti G35. It was then given all the frills with white leather, which is very practical, I'm sure, especially what with all of the Joker's makeup and as neon lights and snazzy pink reflective paint job. Very, uh, uh special. The car for the movie would be built by a Florida-based company called Vader Exotics. This business was established so that buyers with a budget could trick out their own less fancy cars to look like Italian-made supercars, but at a fraction of the price. But anyways, they've essentially made this crazy Joker's car body kit available to any fan that feels like splashing out on a new look for their own boring car. They say that, since the body kit doesn't require any additional modifications to the donor car chassis, engine, or even electronics, it's possible to convert a vehicle into a silly supervillain car for about $10,000. A bargain, I'm sure, if you happen to enjoy that sort of thing. Number 18. The Hell Cycle The 2007 Ghost Rider movie starring the unparalleled in talent Nicolas Cage may have grossed big bucks at the box office, but it's gone down as a bit of a stinker amongst movie fans. Even so, it does have a loyal following, and as such, there's still interest in the motorcycle that starred in the movie. The story of Ghost Rider follows Johnny Blaze, a stunt motorcyclist who makes a deal with the demon Mephistopheles in order to save his father. When he is transformed into the Ghost Rider, Blaze becomes a fire scald vigilante with crazy supernatural abilities. Years later, that demon tasks him with stopping his son Blackheart and his demonic followers from obtaining a contract that could unleash hell on Earth. As the Ghost Rider, Blaze battles evil forces, conflicted by his cursed existence and quest for redemption. The film explores themes of morality, redemption, and the consequences of deals with the devil. And aren't these things we all ponder on a daily basis? The movie blends comic book aesthetic with a darker narrative, and a big part of that includes the motorcycle, or Hell Cycle as it's called. The bike was custom built for the movie by a company in Australia at a total cost of $300,000. And it is a rather silly 11 foot long thing and stands at 50 inches tall. It has no front or rear suspension, and it's powered by a KTM 525 single cylinder four stroke engine, and it's also super loud. 
The bike is not street legal, but it looks really awesome. And as every detail has been considered in the aesthetic construction of the vehicle, it's pretty cool. Even if you're not allowed to ride it to the grocery store. Number 17. The Captain America Motorcycle This one is not really anything to do with Captain America the comic book hero. This is a legendary Harley Davidson that is named Captain America and was featured in the classic 1969 movie Easy Rider. The Captain America bike is a super American thing and not only because it's a big American flag on it, although that definitely does help. The shiny chrome paint makes it really stand out and the bike has become a kind of symbol of rebellious spirit like going against the rules for people who didn't like the way that things were, but doing all that while being cool and riding a motorcycle. You know, American-y stuff. Featured in Easy Rider, starring Dennis Hopper and Peter Fonda, the Captain American was ridden by the latter actor in his role as they go across the United States. Captain America is like a work of art, made by hand and not from a machine. It's different from regular bikes with its chopper stylings and unique paint job. People say it's a special kind of American art. The bike is super famous, not only for being in movies, but also because some people argue about it. Where it has become quite the mystery, although there are rumors that it sold back in 2014 for a staggering $1.35 million, which would make it one of the most expensive Harley Davidsons in the world. Number 16. Replica Ghostbusters Car Unless you have only recently returned to civilization after having lived your entire life on a desert island with absolutely no media, then you'll likely have some kind of idea about what Ghostbusters is. And therefore, you'll also have seen the iconic Ghostbusters car at some point in your life. Ecto-1, the vehicle that the eccentric band of ghost-busting scientists drive around, is a 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor Ambulance that was converted into the iconic and instantly recognizable Ghostbusters car. This vehicle, with its distinct shape and tail fins, is covered with all the extra ghost-busting essentials, like flashy lights and noisy sirens, along with plenty of logos. It's such a beloved icon of these classic movies that it should come as no surprise that people have made their replicas. Although the original Cadillac that was used is extremely difficult to come by these days and expensive to boot, there have been other efforts to convert similar shaped vehicles into Ghostbuster cars. Old hearses are a popular choice for conversion, and there are many people with the skills and dedication to bring these iconic cars to life. Number 15. The Optimus Prime Truck Next up, we have this Optimus Prime truck that was built back in 2016. This is a heavily customized truck that was created by a bunch of extremely dedicated nerd-like people to build the perfect replica, and well, as perfect as a pretend cartoon idea can be made without the use of special effects and the magic of cinema. For anyone who's had their head in the clouds or didn't give a stuff about comic book junk, you may want to know that Optimus Prime is a central character in the Transformers franchise. This robot is the leader of the Autobots, which is a faction of sentient robotic beings, originally created by the benevolent Primus to combat the villainous Decepticons. Optimus is all about an unshakable commitment to peace, freedom, and the protection of sentient life. Well, the rules have just changed. This Autobot can transform into a massive and powerful semi-truck, the character is equipped with a huge amount of strength, resilience, and leadership skills. And so, these dedicated replica-building people, a team of no less than 25 of them, went out of their way to build the Optimus Prime truck from the Michael Bay movie Transformers Age of Extinction. And yes, this is the movie version and not the cartoon one. They wanted in particular to build this replica because at the time there were no others like it. People had already built the old original cab over once, and the old Peterbilt, but the new movie Optimus Prime was still only within the movie, and nobody had bought it off the screen and onto the street. So, the owner of the truck says that he gets a lot of hate for having this particular version. People apparently are boring purists and are judgmental about this choice. Because of their personal opinion about the movie or whatever, if they don't like it, they don't have to drive it now, do they? Number 14. The X-Jet in Hollywood movies, there is one futuristic jet plane that is featured more than any other, the Blackbird. This is the real-life X-Jet from the X-Men, 
and it is a very real yet still almost mythical aircraft. Back in the late 1950s and early 60s, Area 51 would be the location of several special projects, one of which was the development of a stealth reconnaissance aircraft known as Archangel 12 Blackbird. It was designed by Lockheed for the CIA and was destined to become the fastest plane in the world at the time, eventually being the blueprint for the SR-71 Blackbird. It was tested in Area 51 and was veiled in huge secrecy, which was particularly important given the fact that it was being built as a spy plane in the midst of some distinctly uncomfortable Cold War tensions. The Blackbird became a priority for the United States after the U-2 spy plane pilot Gary Powers was captured in the Soviet Union in 1960. The U-2 was a clunky and slow plane that had to fly at extremely high altitude in order to avoid being detected. And so, they really needed a new and improved spy plane. The Blackbird jet would first be featured as a transportation of choice for the X-Men in 1975 and has been redesigned over the years, but remains a central feature of the comics and movies. The real-life Blackbird remained cloaked in secrecy until the fall of the USSR in 1991 when some information about it finally became declassified. The real world and the comic world had been remarkably close together. Number 13. Kit Knight Rider is a classic 1980s TV series centered on Michael Knight, a character played by David Hasselhoff, who is a former police detective that becomes a modern-day high-tech crime fighter with the help of an advanced artificially intelligent car named Kit, Knight Industries 2000. Created by the Foundation for Law and Government, or FLAG, Knight and Kit head off on a crusade against criminals and injustice. Kit is equipped with various futuristic features, like a totally indestructible exterior, the ability to reach incredible speed, and advanced AI that allows it to communicate with Michael. The duo fights a whole bunch of adversaries while unraveling various mysteries along the way. The TV series really got into the imagination of a lot of people, especially children in the 1980s. It was a more simple time, you know, and people were impressed with junk like this. David Hasselhoff became a household name and a cultural icon as a result of the show. Again, times are weird, and what can really be said? When the Hoff auctioned off his very own personal kit, it certainly caught rather a lot of attention. Although the car was called Kit and even owned by Michael Knight, it was not actually one of the vehicles used in the series, and it didn't even talk. Boring! This car was actually a Pontiac Firebird Trans Am that was styled after the iconic kit of the show. It included colorful illuminated dash, but naturally, it did not have any of the super cool indestructible features of the real thing. Number 12. Transformer Next up, we have another Transformer. This time, it was built by a Turkish company out of a BMW 3 Series, and apparently, it could not only transform, but was also entirely drivable, which is wild. The Turkish company, known as Letvision, built this bright red transformer named Latrons, being operated by remote control. The car drives slowly and deliberately into a parking area before stopping in front of the camera and beginning the transformation. It then gradually unfolds and stands up, becoming a robot. The project was the work of 12 different engineers and four technicians, taking over eight months of work, but they did achieve a car that could fold up and unfold into an approximation of a robot. That is about all it did, though. The Transformer did not go out into the world and fight for justice, or even run around defeating Decepticons, but at least they tried. So top marks for effort, and it does look cool, even if it is essentially just a weird fold-up BMW. Number 11. The Tron Light Cycle If your goal in life is to draw attention to yourself while also pretending to be in a science fiction film, then this motorcycle is the answer to your prayers. The 2010 Disney movie Tron Legacy may not have set the world alight, but it did give plenty of people the desire to ride a Tron cycle, and thanks to some particularly keen designers and engineers, there have been several attempts to make that fantasy into a street-legal motorcycle. It's finally been achieved, and this crazy-looking bike was designed by artist Daniel Simon. He created blueprints for the unique bike and then put them forward to Parker Brothers Concepts in order to be made into a reality. The custom motorcycle was built around the Xenon, 
an electric model bike with top speeds of about 70 miles per hour. The things that make this such a unique machine, and likely what draws fans to it, are its electroluminescent strips on its rims and the super aero carbon fiber body kit that's built around its steel chassis. It looks the business, and the light show when it's in full effect is what fans have been jonesing for all this time. A lucky few owners of the machine can enjoy such shiny futuristic features as customizable lights and colors, as well as thumbprint ignition and built-in iPad. It looks a bit like a fidget spinner, but don't let that put you off, especially if you have $55,000 burning a hole in your pocket. Number 10. The Armor of Iron Man When Adam Savage of Mythbusters fame decided that he wanted to make an Iron Man suit, he didn't mean that he wanted to dress up and go to Comic-Con like every other nerd. I mean, well, he did. But he wasn't just going to look like Iron Man, he wanted a suit that could fly like him as well. This is the suit that Adam Savage ended up creating, and although it may not really look much like the one from the movies, the suit has all the features, or at least the ones that are possible in the real world, with the laws of physics and such like restrictions, as it does in the comics. It's a shiny thing too, and frankly, kind of amazing. And it really does fly. It was no mean feat, and the entire process involved a lot of additional outside help from a lot of experts. Most notably was the addition of five mini jet engines and a jetpack from Gravity Industries. This was the entire core of the suit's flying power. It was actually made from an extremely thin form of titanium and would be created using a 3D printer. And with the addition of those jetpacks, it does fly indeed. Oh, and it's also conveniently bulletproof, so that's nice as well. I mean, it is America after all. Number 9. Black Beauty from Green Hornet Black Beauty, not the shiny horse, but rather the shiny car, is a customized 1966 Chrysler Crown Imperial that's known as the iconic vehicle in the 1960s television series The Green Hornet. With its sleek and distinctive design, Black Beauty is a symbol of 60s style sophistication and comic book crime fighting cool of that era. The car did not begin looking anywhere near as rad, though, as this, and it underwent significant modifications for its role as the Green Hornet's mobile crime-fighting base. It would be equipped with all manner of weird and wonderful gadgets and weapons, including rocket launchers and gas nozzles, all of which were used by the Green Hornet in the pursuit of justice. The car had a powerful V8 engine that was pretty advanced for the time, and this provided the speed that would have been necessary for the Green Hornet and Kato to outmaneuver all those naughty adversaries in the show. In the series, the car had a boatload of impressive capability. They may not seem so awesome today, but the junk was cutting edge back in the 60s. There was a scanner for monitoring the police, as well as a hidden surveillance system. The Green Hornet and Kato, played by Van Williams and Bruce Lee respectively, relied on Black Beauty as their covert weapon against crime. Beyond all the functional upgrades, Black Beauty's gloss black finish, green headlights, and distinct aesthetics made the car into the legend that it is today. The car became an enduring symbol of superhero style, transport, and managed to capture the imaginations of fans. And frankly, when you compare it to the tedious molded fiberglass junk that we have today, the competition is null and void, really. This was a real car, and it was also pretty cool to look at. Number 8. Spider-Man's Car in 2019, when everyone was getting all excited about the Avengers Endgame coming out, there was a right old kerfuffle amongst fans as a bunch of nerd types decided to build a Lamborghini that wore a Spider-Man suit. It's truly important work, and will ensure the future of humanity, I'm sure. The car was promptly, and most originally dubbed, spider Guinea, and was taken off to a place called High Street Shopping Center in Canada in order to promote the movie premiere. This place, presumably being a much more important and central location in the world than it appears to be, and not just a boring old town with a cinema that was going to be showing the sequel. Except that it was just that. And the car? Well, it was basically just a car wearing fancy decals. They sent it off to the Diamond Rally soon afterwards. This is the annual car show in Canada where all manner of luxury and expensive supercars are shown off to enthusiasts. So, whatever. Let's move swiftly on. Number 7. Invisible Car When Die Another Day came out in 2002, it was almost immediately and universally dubbed the stupidest James Bond movie ever. 
That high praise was heaped upon it mainly on the account of one of the more notorious of 007's gadgets, the invisible car. This car was an Aston Martin V12 Vanquish, and it was the butt of endless jokes and essentially caused the movie to go down in 007 history as very silly and basically garbage. But despite all the ridicule, it turns out that the technology to make the car invisible has actually been developed. Kind of, sort of. In 2012, a group of engineers made a Mercedes disappear, quote unquote. The wheels are still rather obvious, but it kind of looks like a kid who thinks they're hiding because they can't see you, but, you know, their feet are sticking out from behind the curtains. Anyways, this so-called vanishing car uses the general idea that to make a thing invisible, you only need to be able to see through it to what is behind it. The car is covered in a load of mats and LEDs, and there's a digital camera on the other side. The camera films the opposite side of the car, and the video is played on the display on the other side in real time. This is to create the illusion that it's see-through. Those wheels, <laughs> they're really spoiling the show now, aren't they? Number 6. The Silver Surfer The Silver Surfer, or Norrin Rad, is a cosmic superhero in Marvel Comics, imbued with the power cosmic by the cosmic entity Galactus. What a lot of cosmic! The Surfer becomes a herald who travels the cosmos, finding planets for his master to consume. However, he rebels against Galactus to protect the Earth. Endowed with a silvery, metallic appearance and the ability to manipulate cosmic energy, the surfer possesses superhuman strength, speed, and the power of flight on his iconic surfboard. Back in 2016, a guy in New York City took the character to the next level for a Halloween costume that blew people's minds. This is Jesse Wellens, a man who was painted from head to toe by a makeup artist in order to make him look exactly like the Silver Surfer. He then rode an electric surfboard through the streets of New York City, and the whole thing was, of course, filmed for the old YouTube. I mean, this was back in 2016, and essentially nothing even happened then. If it hadn't been filmed, now did it. Number 5. Bruce Wayne's Aston Martin Bruce Wayne, on the account of being a bazillionaire, had a whole massive collection of fancy schmancy vehicles, most of which are real-life luxury cars. The Aston Martin DB Mark III is one of the more nice ones of the collection, and he can be seen driving this car in one scene in the 2016 movie Batman vs. Superman. The car was produced between 1957 and 1959 and is seen by many as the real pinnacle of British sports car stylings. It has a 2.9-liter inline-six with some decent aerodynamic shapes, an elegant grille, and the option of disc brakes. It was the optimum blending of style and performance for the era. Inside, it would be as elegant as it was out, and featured all the usual wood and leather and shiny metal you would expect from a very high-end and expensive car. Production was limited, but there are a lot of these cars that remain in the collections of enthusiasts with deep pockets. Number 4. The Bentley Arnage the Bentley Arnage T is a super luxury car that would be produced by Bentley from 2005 to 2009 and epitomizes the fanciest and most high-end stuff in the manufacturer's lineup. As the flagship model of the time, the Arnage T had a distinctive blending of elegance and power, featuring a 6.75-liter twin-turbocharged V8 engine that delivered an exceptional torque and an extremely vroomy driving experience. The exterior design had all the classic Bentley styling junk, which included prominent grille, rounded headlights, and a long and graceful body. The Arnage T's interior is all manner of opulence with handcrafted wood veneer, leather, and all the modern amenities that cater to the most discerning passengers. Basically, there are tons of cup holders. Known for its impressive acceleration and top-tier craftsmanship, the Arnage T is all about British luxury motoring. Its dynamic performance is boosted by advanced tech, which includes a sophisticated air suspension system that makes for a smooth and comfortable ride. It's the sort of thing that only a Kardashian or an oligarch can afford, or would actually want, to be perfectly honest. Number 3. Deadpool Vespa In the Deadpool comic books, Wade Wilson, that's Deadpool by the way, rides a scooter. This scooter is represented in the movies as a Vespa Primavera. The scooter has been available in one form or another for decades. This particular version has been produced by Plagion under the Vespa brand since 2013, but the classic design has been a favorite of Italians and many others all across the world since the 1960s. Other than being used by the anti-hero in these movies, 
There are not really many differentiating features of this particular scooter. The one ridden by Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool in the movies is a red Vespa Primavera that is as charming and quirky as the character himself. Number 2. Kia Transformer Back in the 2010s, it was a big decade for weird vehicles. Another Transformer-type car was being promoted all over the show. This was the Robakia, and it was being shown to a lot of excitable people at the Sao Paulo International Motor Show. Basically, the car started out as a Kia Mojave or Barijo SUV, and then got a bit of a makeover so that it could pull out a few maneuvers and appear to become shaped like a robot. You know, like a Transformer. But, and this is the ultimate problem with all of these transforming cars, it cannot go out in the world and run around in its robot form fighting crime. So what's the actual point of it, I beg you? Yes, marketing, but does it even work? Number 1. The Hum Rider Okay then, this is the Hum Rider. It does sound kind of rude and exciting, but it's actually pretty lame. This is a Jeep Grand Cherokee that was given a bunch of extra additions by the telecommunications giant Verizon as a part of a promotional campaign back in 2017. Basically, this SUV, it's been fitted with a load of hydraulics, which allows it to raise up to about 5 feet above the ground, if for no other reason than the fact that the marketing campaign slogan was Elevate Your Ride, which was a connectivity service for drivers to be able to connect their phone to their car. Like that was some kind of big deal or something. <laughs> Well, that's all from today's very mixed bag of vehicles. Some were superhero, some were sorta of super, and some, well, they were decidedly mediocre. But which one of them would be your favorite? Go ahead and tell me all about it in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.